Good morning. Welcome to Heart and Soul Center of Light. My name is Janice Richman, and I'm a licensed practitioner and member at Heart and Soul, and I am honored to be facilitating our meditation experience this morning. This morning, we are taking the opportunity to immerse ourselves in stillness so that we may connect with the knower within so that it may be our guide during this time of change. Wherever you are, I invite you to make yourself comfortable so that you may be open to divine guidance. Know that right where you are, God is, and therefore it is a safe and sacred space. So if you are willing, I invite you to gently allow your eyes to close and take this opportunity to relax and let go of all that has transpired up until this moment. Join me in taking a deep conscious breath. Breathe in and release with a sigh. Now give thanks for your breath as you gently allow it to return to its natural rhythm. Take a moment to notice the path that your breath takes through your body. While the path our breath takes, like each of us, is unique, every breath is a part of the one breath, which is breathing us all. Let your breath be an ever-present reminder of your oneness with spirit and its ever-availability as a guide and source of inner peace love and clarity, regardless of outer circumstances. As we enter the stillness, remember to focus on your breath, and I offer this affirmation as our guide. I have been that I have been, I am that I am, and I will be what I will be, simultaneously.
I have been that I have been. I am that I am. And I will be what I will be simultaneously. I now invite you to return your awareness to the space that you are in. To do this, you might focus on your feet and notice and feel the support of the floor underneath. You might gently rub your palms together. Begin to expand your awareness and feel the space around you. When you are ready, I invite you to gently allow your eyes to open. This completes our meditation experience. And so it is. Thank you for creating this safe and sacred container of love for our service. We have a wonderful opportunity during these times to spend more time being still and renewing our connection with the one. And I invite you to do so whenever and wherever possible. It has been a pleasure and an honor to facilitate this morning's meditation. Thank you. Good morning, Heart and Soul family. Welcome to our virtual Sunday celebration. My name is Ron Marshall, and I'm a licensed practitioner and founding member at Heart and Soul, and I'm honored to be bringing our opportunities for how to be engaged here at Heart and Soul Center of Light. Uh, as always, we ask that if you are joining us from outside our local Bay Area, that you let us know uh, in the chat where, you're join where you are joining us from. And our Heart and Soul 2021 annual theme is Adventures in Faith, Rise Up. And our daily read for the year is Around the Year with Emmett Fox. And today is day seven, Thy Kingdom Come. We invite you to stay connected with us through the social media uh, channel of your choice, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and also our podcasts. Uh, there are opportunities for you to give either by visiting our website uh, and or texting uh, to give. And also, please do take advantage and uh, sign up for our uh, recap at heartsoulcenter.org slash sign up. And lastly, we continue to lift up our community affirmation. Thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. And so it is. Our practitioners are hosting our uh, review of uh, Around the Year with Emmett Fox. It takes place on Monday evening, 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. Uh, you can uh, join via Zoom. Uh, there is no need to pre-register. We invite you to please take this opportunity to see how a mystic power that is able to transform your life can be used to transform your life. And come sing with us. We begin this week our Heart and Soul Rise Up Virtual Choir for Easter 2021. Uh, sessions are going through uh, Tuesday, February the 9th through March the 30th, Tuesdays uh, 7 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. And you must register this Tuesday, uh, February 9th, at heartsoulcenter.org slash virtual choir reg. We continue to imagine and manifest justice for all. Uh, this Wednesday, um, February the 10th, we're doing Mindful Love and uh, Justice in February, and which will be introducing a mindfulness app for black folks with co-founder Sonia Russell and Dave David Walker. Again, we start at 
15 for meditation and the experience starts at 6.30 p.m. And our sister Tammy Hall continues to grace us with her amazing talent on Facebook on Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, please do take the opportunity to experience our sister's amazing love, expression of love in the form of her amazing talent. And please do remember to tip her generously. And now you can get a pop at any time, uh, pop. Points of Power are available now on YouTube at youtube.com slash c slash heart and soul center of light. And hmm, for such a time as this, we have the Power of Prayer also available uh, through podcast. Uh, and there's an opportunity for you to continue to have yourself steeped in prayer on demand uh, by going to heart, https anchor.fm slash heart soul center. Hello, my name is Felicia Williams Cozy. I'm a licensed practitioner and a proud member of the Prayer and Care Village at Heart and Soul Center of Light. Today, it is my pleasure to remind you that prayer and care is here for you to celebrate during those times when life is wonderful to know that there's a community that celebrates with you, and also to support you in knowing the truth during times of challenge and change. We're available for you every Sunday, about 10 minutes after service, and we offer prayer rooms that will support you in various topics. We also offer midweek prayer on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. You can reach us 24 seven in a couple of different ways. We have an online prayer and care email address, prayerandcare at heartsoulcenter.org, where you can submit a prayer request at any time for anything, and a prayer facilitator will pray for you and with you. We also now have a new phone line that is available 24-7 and in any time zone, where you can call in with a prayer request. And one of our prayer facilitators will get back to you within 24 hours. You are not alone. We stand with you in truth and in knowing what is highest and best. So the other thing on first Sundays, we get to celebrate birthdays. If you are celebrating a birthday in the month of February from us at Heart and Soul Center of Light to you, we say to you, beloved, we know who you are. You are the beloved of God. And we wish for you this day that you recognize within your being that you are filled with radiant joy, success, prosperity, and love in all that you do and all that you be. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So let's just take a breath and give thanks for it as we let it go. Our vision speaks to who we are in the world and is often viewed as our intention for how we operate. And this is our opportunity as a community to state our intention in the form of our vision. So we're going to recite this together. We are a loving and compassionate world-class teaching and empowerment ministry. Through a consciousness of universal God presence, we release all resistance, 
separation, and fear. We claim our personal liberation and accept the eternal availability of joy, love, and abundance. Through our intention to be love and spread joy, we engender reflections of the same and more in others. Our ministry is a gift to the world, which expands through our practice and dedication. We welcome all people, and together we make a quantifiable positive difference on the planet. And so it is. And so, beloved, let's continue in this, this space of knowing, this space of peace, this space of absolute certainty and awareness that there is truly but one life. That life is the life of God. It is the very life that is living and breathing each and every person that is within the sound of my voice and beyond. How good it is to know that the very thing that rises the sun each morning kept us while we slept. That the very thing that in inspires birds to sing woke us this morning. How good it is to know that each and every one of us is a bright light on the vast continuum that is God. So it is with a heart filled with gratitude and recognition of our oneness with the one that I speak my word on behalf of heart and soul center of light this day. Knowing that this truly is a good day because it is a day that God has made and therefore contains everything that God is. Each of us is heir to all of the beauty and love and joy, peace, health, abundance, creativity, harmony and compassion that is God. It is ours by right of consciousness. And so I know that this is an opportunity for us to step into this truth, to know that we are truly blessed, divinely guided and held and loved in the arms of God. And this love shows up as an abundance of all good. It shows up in loving, supportive relationships. It shows up as creativity and perfect expression. It shows up as love, love and more love. I'm grateful for all of those who hmm, have said yes to serving selflessly at Heart and Soul Center of Light. I'm grateful for the technology that brings us together during this time. I'm grateful for those who pray without ceasing our practitioner core, knowing the truth on behalf of all in the form of prayer. I'm grateful for our board of trustees who goes about the business of heart and soul in loving consciousness. I'm grateful for our ministerial team always holding the high watch on behalf of heart and soul. I'm grateful for our senior and founding minister, Reverend Andriette Earl, for her yes. And continuing to say yes, yes, yes. And her creativity and her openness in bringing the message of spirit through her to us. Most of all, I'm grateful for the transformation that is taking place in all of our lives in each and every instant. I'm grateful for knowing that everything that is, that the universe is, is conspiring for our good. I'm grateful that right where we are, God is and all is truly exceedingly well. And so this, with this knowing, I can, I can step aside in consciousness. I can allow the perfect activity of love and law to say yes, yes, and yes to our heart's desires. And so I allow this to be grateful, grateful, grateful. And so it is. Amen.
like this is so important that we pray. So I'll pray for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. me. See, I love you. And I need you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. I won't harm you. With words from my mouth. mouth. I love you. And I I need need you. So I'll pray for you. You pray for me. See, I love you and I need you. I won't harm you. With any words from my mouth. Because I love you and I need you. So right now, I'll pray for you. Pray for me. Because see, I love you. And I need you. I need you to survive. And I won't harm you with any words spoken from my mouth. Because I love you. And I need you. So right now, I'll pray for you. You pray for me. I love, I love you, you and I need, I need you. you to survive. I promise I won't I harm, won't you. harm you. you with any words spoken from my mouth from my because I love I you and I need I you. Need Good morning, heart and soul, and happy birthday to the February babies. So we are still, we continue to be on an adventure in faith, where we're called to rise up. And today, we're called to rise up and know that I love you, 
and that I need you to survive, that we need each other, that literally we are in this love together. I need you, you need me on this adventure in faith. We need each other. Big ups and huge thanks to the Heart and Soul Ensemble. We are, we are working it out, y'all, to ensure that everyone is safe when they come to Heart and Soul, and that's like so few, so they needed to be here almost by themselves, other than the tech folks who were literally doing the work, and then, you know, we come in another time. So I want you to know um, that we are doing everything required, suggested, in order to ensure that we are all safe whenever we are in the building. So I just am so grateful for them. This notion of, of us acknowledging that we need each other and that we're in this together, Bishop Desmond Tutu said, my humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. I need you. You need me. I love you. We need each other to survive. If we can get that like into our system, if we can know that that is the truth for us, about us, and that we can open our hearts and our minds and our living in a way where we are accepting. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that, I refuse to accept the view that humankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. He said, I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. And that would have to be what we bring to how we are together. There's, as we are launching Black History, I wanted to share with you about David Ruggles, who was born in 1810 and passed, tragically I would say, very young in 1849. And I didn't know I almost stumbled upon David Ruggles. I really thought I was bringing something else today when I began my, uh, my study and my preparation. But what I found was that, um, and let me just read this little part the, exactly the way it's written about him. It says, after he escaped from slavery in Baltimore in early September 1838, Frederick Bailey, the man who later became known as Frederick Douglass, was broke, homeless, and scared. As he huddled among barrels in New York City's Chamber Street dock, worried about slave catchers and rats, a black man wearing a stovepipe hat, spectacles, and a formal jacket and pants emerged and invited Douglass to his home just a few blocks away. I never knew that. I never knew because uh, New York City at that time, this is in the, in the mid 1800s, was a hotbed of slave catchers and um, what did they call, there was another name for um, the black folks who also supported the capturing of, uh, of black folks to slavery. Now the slave catchers we know were really just looking for any warm body. So there were a number of people, 12 years a slave gives you uh, that story that is based on the true story of a free man who is captured and enslaved. And what we know for sure is that that happened more often than it didn't. What we didn't know is David Ruggles had a role in getting folks freed. He literally, was a street, I mean, he was, oh, ooh. Um, the author here says David Ruggles was arguably the first full-time black activist in the United States. 
He operated New York's first library and bookstore for black folks. He edited and sold newspapers and magazines. He founded a black high school and literary society. An innovator, he combined his activism with commerce by operating a grocery that only sold products made without enslaved labor. Over the course of his life, he was a true 19th century Renaissance man, a visionary political leader, a savvy street fighter, and a healer. He didn't share Frederick Douglass's fame or good fortune, but he was an indelible influence on the younger man, Frederick Douglass, crucial to forging the legend that Douglass was to become. This is pretty much the backstory, if you will. He was born in Norwich, Connecticut in 1810 to freeborn parents. And it is said that they literally hired a tutor from Yale because he was so bright. The, it reminded me of, uh, there's a little part in Hamilton where it says the community took up a collection to send him. And that's what happened in this case. Because he could not attend Yale, they hired, they took up a collection and hired a tutor so that he would uh, have a Latin tutor to work with him. He joined the anti-slave movement in 1828 under the mentorship of, of the editor of the Freedom Journal. And uh, that was America's first black newspaper. It was, um, hmm. It says he made his first waves as an activist when he hired self-emancipated black people at his grocery store that he opened up in New York City in 1827. Arsonists burned it down twice. He wrote fiery articles on the evils of slavery, antagonizing moderate abolitionists as well as slaveholders and advocates. An interesting thing is that in a confrontation on a train over seating, he refused to, to move. He was tossed off of a moving train. And, you know, and, and all of his belongings as well. And so there were several attempts to kill him. He has had notes in his journal of helping 600 enslaved people to freedom during the 1830s. And some of these were literally on the street where he realized that the slave catchers had folks and were trying to take them and he would fight for them to try to get them loose. And in some cases, he literally took them to court. And in some cases, it was interesting because, oh, let's see if I can see that little part here. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Um, but I know that there was a portion where, where part of my uh, research revealed that Frederick Douglass actually watched David Ruggles argue a court case where he literally was able to, you know, in court they often didn't let, in the 1800s certainly, if black folks were even present, they did not let them speak. They could not speak in their own defense. That's how, even though they could take them to court when the slave catchers caught black folks, whether they were free, freed or had been ever enslaved, they were not, they just gave them an identity. They just say, this is, you know, that's Sarah and she belongs to, and the woman could not say, my name is Andriette. I've never, I was born, here and I here's and I can I know these people and they could never defend themselves. So it, the the witness was just the white witness was given the full credit for whatever the testimony was. So Frederick Douglass was very impressed to see him argue, to see him interview and challenge white men. And I, as I read it, I got a sense of Frederick Douglass, who had recently been enslaved himself cut his eye teeth kind of at the, at the knees of this man who was showing him how to stand, how to write, how to call folks on the carpet, my mother would say, call them on the carpet for behavior that was, you know, his home was ground central for the Underground Railroad. So 
uh, uh, Frederick Douglass got to meet a number of emancipated folks and was in that hotbed of, of freedom activity. If you, if you can imagine what that was as the, over his first 10 days of not being enslaved when he's in that house. So he's so impressionable as well and open and everything that is poured into him is about how to, oh, they call, I see it here, they call them blackbirds who preyed upon Northern African Americans seizing them to exchange for cash and shipment to perpetual bondage. It is said that David Ruggles was part of the Amistad um, trial team. He was a part of, of either helping to put that together or being present for that or certainly making a difference in that. You, I'm duly impressed. I did not know, maybe you, maybe y'all already knew about David Ruggles, but I am simply lifting him up in this first Sunday of our black history tradition because I'm wanting to set the tone for what is required. We need each other. You know, David Ruggles is kind of risking his own freedom and taking Frederick Douglass and others in. You know, what we know is they were burning down homes and, and all of that. And so, but he stood fearlessly with amaz amazing courage to uh, handle this. Oh, here's the portion. It says that Frederick Douglass watched from a court gallery as Ruggles became one of the first black men to act as a lawyer in an American court, cross-examining a white man during a trial. He also watched him produce an issue of the nation's first black magazine, The Mirror of Liberty, and absorbed an important piece of wisdom from his new mentor, that writing was fighting. Because we know that Douglas was known for for his writings and also for, as an orator. But we know, so we, I can just see how, you know, how he came to be. We need each other. We need each other. Also, David Ruggles said that words are nothing. Action is everything. And even if he hadn't said it, even if he hadn't spoken those words, his life is evidence of it. His life is clearly evidence that he was not just out speaking, and he was a spokesperson. He was often speaking uh, against and writing against, and he also would give money to those who were, because they needed it. So it was $5 here and $5. That seemed to be the way he was doing it. Somebody's going to have to do the calculation. I meant to do it. The for. In, in the 18, mid 1800s, let's say 1838, uh, because that's where some of the story begins, um, how much $5 was, just so we have a sense of how generous and how committed he clearly was to making a change. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us of love and power. He says, power properly understood is nothing but the ability to achieve purpose. So David Ruggles was powerful. It is the strength required to bring about social, political, and economic change. He was all about it. What is needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive. David Ruggles showed us that love I'm sorry, and love without power is sentimental and anemic. David Ruggles showed us that was a true example of power, true power. Where Ernest, where I'm sorry, Martin Luther King Jr. says that power at its best is love, implementing the demands of justice. And justice at its best is power, correcting everything that stands against love. And I just happen to think that, that we could have a photo right there of, well, a picture, a rendering of David Ruggles. Because it's very clear that he was demonstrating power at its best. 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us that love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy to a friend. I'm reminded that David Ruggles had an amazing relationship with a cadre of um, allies. And maybe during this month or maybe during Black History Month, if I don't get to it, I will include in the recap, make sure you're signed up for the recap because there'll be some little bonus pieces for black history. We'll make sure that we include a link that shows, um, we'll make sure that we include a link to some of the bonus pieces. I'm not sure what all will get covered because I didn't know this was gonna get covered today. So I'm not going to expose my hand, but I do want you to know that there were so, y'all have to know this, that the Underground Railroad, there's no way. I mean, we, we, I'm presenting it, but you know he was at risk daily, 24-7, 366. He was at risk for having his home be a, a station on the Underground Railroad. There was a time that one story that is told is how they tried to, how he, was against a, um, is that $150? <laughs> so $5 in 1838 was the equivalent of $150. So if you can picture that he was literally setting folks up with the equivalent today of $150, think, think about reentry. The equivalent, because you know our our current slave system is the penal system, so in this reentry system is it's really very similar. We this is the it's the the new slavery, if you will, and not new, but it's the it's the current iteration of enslavement of largely. And there are others. Don't misunderstand. This is Black history. I'm talking about Black folks right now. And uh, so it's the, it's the way that black men are enslaved and it certainly began immediately, 14th Amendment, immediately after slavery is outlawed. You can, well, now I'm on a new talk. Let, let me just say this about that real quickly, that you can, you can imagine what it's like for folks who have a mindset of usury Generation, generational usury of humans, I mean. When the law says you can't have them pick your cotton, nurse your children, prepare the food, manage the house, all the lands, grow everything, pick everything, and not pay them. When the law says that, you've got to understand and know that there were some folks who their eyes were bigger than my head. And it went to figuring out how the heck are we going to get this done? Because we're not, we, they're not even enough of us. You know, there were more enslaved folks than there were folks enslaving. That's why it was so lucrative. And so there were, even if they had been willing to, they would not have been able to just, we'll just do it ourselves. Y'all are free going about your business. We just going to do it ourselves. It would not have been a possibility. And so somehow the decision was made, we will create law. So you're right. We, we cannot legally enslave them, but they're going to do this work. They're going to handle all this stuff in exactly the same way as it used to be handled. And so what we'll do is we'll write laws that say you cannot stand around. You can't be standing over here like you see folks at Home Depot when you go. Think that. You see people standing around Home Depot hoping you need help so that you will pay them a little something to do whatever it is you need to have done. It was that kind of thing. They want it to work. But if you stood around, period. There were other little details, but the details don't matter because just like free people got arrested and sometimes ended up in court unable to even say, I was born free. 
we know that this same thing was true for these folks who had just been enslaved. And so the law supported that they would be arrested and then they would simply be leased out to essentially the same folks or the equivalent for the equivalent. They'd be leased out and enslaved in that way. And I just have to take a breath. Because here's the thing, y'all. And many of us can feel this, that I don't know how my great grandmother, my mother said that her great grandmother had been enslaved as a child. And so my mother met her, you know, clearly as a fully grown elder woman. And she would not talk about slavery. She said it was so brutal. It just, she just could not, would not. So many of us are left to thinking, I don't know how they made it through that. Because some of us can hardly make it, on a, you know, for a year on a job. You know what I'm saying? For a, with a certain landlord, you know, shop at a certain spot under certain, you can't go to certain churches. We got all of that where we draw the line, but I don't know how. My grandmother and her sisters walked their trouble down. I don't know how my grandfather, who after his father was killed, had to come home from college. I don't know how. I don't know how families managed. I don't know how black men stood their ground and lived to tell it. I don't know how my people survived slavery. But I know I have to remember because when I remember, I believe. Thank you. I don't know how my mother walked her trouble down. I don't know how my father stood his ground. I don't know how my people survived slavery. I do remember that's why I I don't know why the rivers overflow the bank. I don't know why the snow falls and covers the ground. I don't know why the hurricane sweeps through the land every now and then. Standing in a rainstorm, I believe. Oh 
justice that we need. In today's world especially, it's not easy to keep a center going. You know, often as a participant or a congregant or someone who's part of the community, we're not really thinking maybe about the electric bill and about all the many things it takes to keep a community together and growing. Some of you know that I am the founder of the Prosperity Plus programs 1, 2, and 3, and I know that your center has offered these programs to you. I'm a deep believer in tithing. And we all have giving patterns. Many of us give actually only emotionally. We give when we feel like we have a little extra. And then there's another kind of giving that's a regular repeated giving that comes with a percentage to it. And if it's not 10%, it's 5% or it's 6%, but it comes out of a decision to have circulation in your life. Planting in a beautiful place like the Heart and Soul Center of Light for the growth of a community that you has nurtured you, can nurture you further, and more than that, can spread this wonderful message to a world that is deeply hungering, even if they don't know yet that they're hungering for it. So I invite us on this day to lean in and make a commitment for percentage giving over the next year. And then turn around every three months and take a look at what's happening in your life. Something happens when you're a regular giver. And each month as you're receiving your income, a portion of it goes to support. Uh, it changes the way you feel about yourself. It changes your level of expectation of good in your life. It changes your sense of worthiness and your connection with the very source of your life. Good morning, family. I remember, I believe. This is a statement of faith born out of an attitude of faith. And when you give to Heart and Soul Center of Light, you're demonstrating an attitude of faith and believing that a world that works for everyone is absolutely possible. There are several ways in which you can graciously give your gift to Heart and Soul Center of Light. You can send a check or money order to 5627 Telegraph Avenue, number 405, Oakland, California, 94609. You can also give online at our website, heartsoulcenter.org slash 
give. And while you're there, you might consider setting up your gift as a recurrent event in the time and frequency of your choosing, or you can set it up as a one-time gift, whichever works best for you. Last but not least, you can text the word GIVE to 510-500-5849. However you choose to give is right and perfect. And it's also right to have the proper consciousness around giving it here at Heart and Soul Center of Light. We bless our good before it's given, thereby establishing the good that our gift is intended to do in the world. So wherever you may be in the world, I invite you to just take your gift in hand and place it over your heart or otherwise just place your hand over your heart knowing the greatest gift possible is that pulse of life beating right under your hand. And as we say our blessing together, I bless this gift as healing energy and send it into the divine flow of all good. Infinite prosperity circulates through me through my church, and throughout the world, because I know God as source. And so it is. Mind of whose shoulders we stand on. Uh, beloveds, I'm going to take us back through our opportunities uh, for engagement at Heart and Soul, beginning with a reminder to join our practitioners uh, for our review of uh, Around the Year with Emmett Fox this Monday, uh, 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. And also a reminder that uh, this Tuesday, February the 9th, is our last opportunity to register to be part of our Heart and Soul Rise Up Virtual Choir for Easter Sunday. Uh, again, we want to hear your voice, so please do take the time to register uh, before this Tuesday. Imagining Justice uh, this Wednesday, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, Mindful Love and Justice in February. Uh, again, uh, the meditation starts at 6.15, the experience at 6.30. Remember to join our sister Tammy Hall Thursdays from 6 to 8 Pacific time, and please show your love in the form of uh, uh, gracious gratuities to our sister. And as you may know, we've recently moved. And if you're considering a gift for a new home, gift cards are a great idea. And uh, cards from any of the retailers shown here and are, um, are perfect. And we still have some items on our Amazon wish list. So that's heartsoulcenter.org slash wish list. And a reminder to support those who support us, Marcus Books. We want them to continue to be the oldest independent black bookstore in the country. So please uh, support them. Uh, and as well, uh, Kingston 11 is an opportunity to enjoy some delicious Jamaican food uh, and go to kingston11eats.com. And our heart, excuse me, heart and soul, youth and family are uh, in full effect. The Pulse, our teenage uh, teen program, meets via Zoom at 11.30 a.m. Pacific on Sundays. If you have a youth that you'd like to have join, you can email the Pulse at heartsoulcenter.org. Our Youth and Family vid Village, ages 4 to 12, uh, we're focused on funding meaningful videos for family that you can access at your convenience, and this can be done at heartsoulcenter.org slash watch YFV. If you have any questions or suggestions, please email YFV at heartsoulcenter.org. And as always, we know that prayer works. Group prayer is available every Sunday after service via Zoom teleconference. It's 10 minutes after the conclusion of service and on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. We have four prayer rooms available. Uh, word Creative Self-Expression, Prosperity Supply, Right Action, Divine Guidance, Health Healing, and Love Relationships, Harmony, and Peace. And now you can get your pop on at any time. Uh, you can visit YouTube, Heart, Soul, Center, uh, Heart and Soul Center of Light uh, to view past pops. And also, uh, we have the power of prayer available uh, via, excuse me, via podcast for such a time as this. And you can reach that at https anchor.fm slash heart soul center. Please take advantage of all of these opportunities uh, to get yourself prayed up, both after service on Wednesdays and also uh, via pop. 
And a reminder to check out uh, the February issue of Science of Mind magazine. The cover story uh, is written by our own Reverend Andriette in addition to her monthly uh, uh, column from the inside out, always inspirational. And the uh, cover story for, uh, for this month is absolutely amazing and uplifting. And here's Reverend Andriette. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ravala. Thank you, heart and soul. You know, in the vernacular, from where I stand, I can't tell who's in the house. And so I appreciate that, um, that y'all put in the chat where, you're, where, where you are and in, in you're uh, joining us. And so I just want to acknowledge that I think this might be the first time, or at least the first time you told it, that Spartanburg, South Carolina is in the house. And Columbia, South Carolina is in the house. We got South Carolina in here. San Juan, Puerto Rico is in the house. Jaco, Costa Rica is here. Detroit, Michigan. Salvador, Bahia, Brazil is in the house. And, Tucson, Arizona, and Atlanta, Georgia in the house. Jaffrica, Jackson, Mississippi is in the house. Boston, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Aurora, Colorado are in the house. And I'm just grateful. I, I can't see you, but it makes me feel good to know that you're here with me. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I just want to, I know Ron just told you, but I want to highlight a couple of things for you. This Tuesday is the last day. We will not be announcing the Easter uh, virtual choir anymore because they start on Tuesday. You must register first because of course it's online. How would you know this is not where you just hop in the car and come over. So you must register so you can get the link and all of the details around how it's gonna work. I am so excited that we will have a choir on Easter. And it can include folks from potentially from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and from Jaffrica, and from Atlanta. And Tuesday, and it can include folks from Brazil. Oh, you heard me. <laughs> Come on, Bahia, you heard me. You could be part of, I know you, you could be literally a part of the choir. Come on now, you've been there before. So look at here. I also want you to know that prayer works. You know, I don't even want to say for such a time as this, so act like I didn't say it, because it's important all the time. And so we're doing our best to have it available for you, certainly right after service, and then on Wednesday mornings. But in addition to that, you can call in for prayer. You can call in for prayer. We have our a uh, prayer phone number that I don't have available to me right now. So just know if you get the recap, it'll be there. But here's the thing, you can also tune into um, our power of prayer and it is simply a blog. So you just, it's an audio, you just call in and, and listen to prayers. You can, uh, you can save them, download them to your own library so that you can go to sleep listening to prayers. You can awaken listening to prayers. You can lunch and dinner and breakfast. You can walk. You can do your little exercise program listening to heart and soul prayers. You can get your prayer on is the bottom line. So there's all of these opportunities to be covered, to be covered in prayer for such a time as this. I am grateful. And so there's really nothing for us to do but go to prayer in a consciousness and awareness of knowing that we need each other. I need each and every one within the sound of my voice to know. Well, y'all don't even have to know because I'm going to stand knowing that there's one life. See, when I'm going to know it, I'm going to know that there's one life and that it is the living one, the strong one. 
and that it's a healing power that is love, that is covering and imbuing absolutely everything and everyone. I am willing to stand knowing for those who can't know for themselves, those who have never heard this, those who are not yet believing, I can stand in knowing the very truth that there is one life and each of us is living it. It's the life of the divine. It is living each and every one of us. There's one breath, we're breathing it. And it's breathing us. It's the breath of the divine. It's the breath of source of all life. The living one, the strong one, imbuing, loving, ensuring that each of us is alive. The ensemble saying, I don't know how. I don't know how folks got through it. So I'm going on record right now. It is by the grace of God. It is in the divine knowing that something more is always unfolding. It is in getting our strength from source. It's from knowing the truth. Some would say, not just who I am, but whose I am. And so I speak this word right now from a vantage point of knowing that just like the rivers flow, just like the sun appears to rise each day and then set, that so it is within me that life is eternal and continuous, that every breath that I draw is filling me to the, to the extent that I'm willing to accept it, to breathe in fully, to be transformed. Oh, I don't know how, but I know so. I don't know how it all works, but I know that it does. And so I'm willing to stand trusting, knowing, believing that the divine power is permeating absolutely everything, everyone, that nothing, no one is outside of the realm of the divine the power of the divine, the love of the divine, the peace of the divine, the health and wellness that is the divine. I am calling forth all of this for all of us. Knowing the truth that right where we are, the whole perfect and complete nature of the divine, the living one, perfect source, the all in all is. And according to my willingness, can have its full sway. So this day, I speak this word as a getting out of the way word, as a letting go word, as an expanded access word, as an expanded availability word, a word that moves me closer to letting go and what letting go. And so having established this, I simply, I just released this word. I know, here's what I know for sure, that it can't return void, because I believe it. It is turbocharged by my willingness to know and believe that the goodness that is the divine is active in this word, is active in me. It is vibrating my vocal cords in a way where the truth is being expressed. And so in gratitude, I just let this thing be. Oh, 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 take it, dropping it, getting my hands off of it, not messing with it, allowing it to be, delivering it into the perfect activity of law that I know is love. And so it all gets worked out. It all unfolds in perfect order and perfect form. And so what's mine to do is to let it be, to let go to let God. And so I do, I seal this for all eternity by simply saying, Ashe, Ashe. Amen. Amen. And so it is. So look at here, y'all. Here, here's what you need to know. Here's what you really need to know. On behalf of me and my ancestors, the shoulders on which I stand right now, declaring that this joy that I have, and I am joyful, the world, this world, it didn't give that to me. This peace that I have, this world didn't give that to me. This love that I am and that I have, this world did not give that to me. 